Let's review what transpired earlier today in terms of the assistant coaches interacting with the media. And we heard from Mark Colombo. We heard from Burden Burns, Brett Bielema, as well as Jerome Henderson. We're going to start with Colombo because clearly the offensive line is a huge storyline. And one of the first things that he was asked, which is something that we've talked about more often than not on this program, is is there a benefit when you actually played the position that you're coaching? Mark Colombo had this answer. Well, I think it's, uh, I think relating to offensive linemen, that's, that can happen because, you know, I played in the NFL for a while and I think these guys respect that and respect the fact that I've done it, I've seen it, and it's really a great group of guys. You know, Will's a great, great leader in the room. Um, Will Hernandez. He's a great player. They love having him in the room. And I think just learning, you know, learning from experience that I, I've had and been able to teach these guys, you know, they've really absorbed a lot right now and they're taking it all in. And, you know, I, I believe, you know, we're pushing in the right direction. So, you know, Will's a big part of that. Do you think as a follow-up, do you think the fact that you're a 6'8 guy and you can get on a field with them and kind of show them what to do because you've done it, you know, you're not a, a smaller, older coach. Do you think that helps? Yeah, you know, you know, obviously like mastering the techniques that I'm teaching, being able to show them exactly what I want, um, that's, that's important. Yeah, that's important to me. It's important for them to get a visual of exactly what it is instead of, you know, watching another guy doing a technique that that I was teaching. Um, I'm able to get in there and do it myself, at least right now. You know, I'm 41, so I'm not getting any younger. Uh, at the same time, it's a, I think that's important for them to get a good visual of exactly what you want so you can correct it right there on the field instead of having to go all the way back to the film and correct it afterwards. So that was Mark Colombo, Giants offensive line coach, talking about being a former player, how beneficial that was. Paul Schwartz, by the way, with the follow-up question that followed the initial answer. And Paul, I think that when you have somebody once again, and we've had this conversation where we could further expand on it, there's a relationship that's unique that Mark Colombo has with the rest of the group that perhaps some of the previous Giants offensive line coaches have not had, and that is he's been in the trenches, he's played on the NFL level, and to his point, he could go and line up and show them techniques because you know Mark Colombo's not an old guy. He's not that far removed from the game, Paul, that what he applied when he was playing is completely revamped since. Well, his last year was as a player with the Dolphins in 2011, so it's not that far removed. And he was in the NFL for the better part of a decade and succeeded. All right, six foot eight, over 300 pounds. He's not quite 300 pounds these days. Obviously, he has trimmed down. But from the limited parts that we've been able to watch to this point, what you see, he will get right out there next to the center. He'll be inside the A gap or the B gap, and he's showing them how you're going to move your feet, how you're going to make sure you strike at the snap. I mean, he is physically demonstrating things right there on the field, right next to these guys. And, you know, we've discussed how guys like Pat Flaherty are great line coaches, and there's no question that it does not have to be a prerequisite to be an outstanding offensive line coach. But those guys who had success doing it in the NFL do seem to have a little bit of a leg up or at least somewhat of an easier time translating what they're trying to teach to the current players on the roster. I was doing some research, and this is right up your alley since you love the trenches, Paul. I was curious to see the last time the Giants had an offensive line coach that actually played the position in the NFL. Do you happen to know off the top of your head if I put you on the spot? who the last offensive line coach that played the position was. Might it this be, is right in your wheelhouse. Might it be Rosie Brown? No, it was not Rosie Brown. It's been since then. It was from 1985 to 1992 he was the offensive line Ooh, coach. Ooh, why do I not? I was going to say, Paul, that's right in your wheelhouse. It really is. That's why I brought it up. Who's the Giants offensive line coach for the Super Bowl teams? I'm trying to think about that. Why do I not know this? I don't know. I was only like five years old, so I don't feel bad about it. (laughs) Wait a minute. Let me see. Let me think. Uh, I'm going to look it up, Paul. I'm going to look it up. Let's see if you can find it before I look it up. I'm going through all the parts. Well, I have it in front of me. I can easily reveal it. No, no, no. You don't have to do that much work, the two of you. The Parcells offensive line coach. Yes. Why am I Why am I going brain dead here? Well, this is crazy. <laughs> well, listen, we've done multiple me. studies to explain <laughs> that one, Paul. Yeah, we I only know. have so much time on this program. I know. Lamar, Lamar Leachman was the defensive line coach. Who was the offensive line coach? Why am I, I – it wasn't Bill Austin, was it? No. All right, you're up to like 17 All right, what do you got? Already. What do you got? Fred Hoagland. Yes, Freddie. You're right. <laughs> 
Freddie Freddie Hoagland with the mustache. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, he has the mustache is the important part. <laughs> well, 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 that's that he was the guy. He was the mustache. You're right. You're so right. he was the last time the Giants had an offensive line coach that played the position in the NFL since Mark Colombo. Now, just to put things in perspective, the Giants have had Pete Manjurian. 93 to 96, John Matsko, mm-hmm. 97 to 98, Jim McNally, 99 to 2003, then Pat Flaherty, who had the longest tenure, 04 to 15, yeah, Mike yeah. Solari, and Hal Hunter, who have followed. So yes. my point is, it's been some time, guys, since the Giants actually have had a former NFL player who played in the trenches. No, that's, and that's a really good piece of work by you, Lance, and, uh, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to have had brain lock. But I'll <laughs> tell you one thing, okay? Mike Solari... Uh, in particular, Pat Flaherty in particular, nothing against the other guys, but but those two had gotten a lot of praise from around the football circles yeah. before they even got here. And then, of course, when they got here, Flats wound up helping the Giants win two Super Bowls. And Solari was actually credited by a lot of people around the league for doing a yeoman's job with what was a very suspect offensive line the time that he was here in East Rutherford. Uh, so I'll just point to those two guys as evidence that you can be really good as an offensive line coach without having played. And I, do, I, I know I've referred to Flats a couple of times before, but I do want to make that clear. It's not a prerequisite. 100%. And I echo your sentiments. That was just a little history lesson just to once again good put one. things in perspective. Good one. But not an indictment to your point about the previous coaches that had not necessarily played that position on the NFL level. Remember, a lot of these guys who coached the Giants offensive linemen, they played the position Paul, they may have played it in high school and college. They sure. just didn't necessarily play it in the NFL. So that's also important to note. Well, here's the thing. Regardless of who coaches the Giants offensive line, there's characteristics that you want to see out of the five guys that are going to protect Daniel Jones and establish the run. Mark Colombo was asked that very question. This is what he had to say. Yeah, I think it's it's a work ethic, and it, it's, it's a nasty attitude going out there and just kind of imposing our will on the defense, all right, flying around. All right, that's uh, non-negotiable. And that comes right from uh, Coach Judge in this organization. You know, they demand it here. Okay? The first thing we're going to do is work our, work our butt off, and we're going to play hard. Okay? That's, that's, uh, that's non-negotiable. Everything else, the technique, you know, assignments, stuff like that, we can get that stuff corrected. But the effort, again, non-negotiable. Now, Paul, be honest to the audience. When you heard that live, and now you're hearing it again, how much excitement did you personally feel inside listening to him break down what he wants out of offensive linemen and trenches play? One of the things that we heard the Giants were looking for when Judge uh, first started to talk about this team and then when Colombo first got here as well is that they wanted to adopt the mentality and the philosophy of the Cowboys offensive line, which is exactly what you just heard him talk about. It is that mentality that starts everything. If you are going to play power football, smash mouth football, if you will, you have to have that kind of mentality and that kind of work ethic. Otherwise, you will never get that type of football on the field. Well, and this leads into what he also talked about. He focused on detail and the little things, why they are so important when it comes to coaching the offensive line. What I try to teach, and again, our head coach is just like this, is why, you know, he's, it, it's awesome, right? Attention to detail is everything. Every little step matters, right? I, you know, I'm not going to speak for every other coach in the NFL, but every single step matters. And if you're not coaching every little detail of it, all right, the player can't get better. You know, it's a grind. You got to get in there with every one of these players. You got to make sure, all right, they're doing it exactly the way you want it. And you can see after, even after a few weeks, I mean, these guys are just eating it up. They love getting coached. And that's our job as coaches. You know, Coach Judge, Judge harps on that. Okay? Coach every little detail. And that's the way, you know, we roll as a unit. And that's how you get better as an offensive line. So I'm really excited with the response I've got so far from this unit. I mean, these, these guys have really taken on the challenge. And they're in it every day trying to get better. After practice, working on every little detail, every step. Okay? We just need to keep getting out there, keep getting the reps. And, you know, I'm excited for the future, you know, of this uh, organization. And, Paul, you can argue the reason why detail is so important. He has by far the toughest position to coach right now because with limited padded practices, and he even responded to a lot of questions when he was asked about specific players, I've seen this and that, but, hey, 
Once we put the pads on, then we'll separate the men from the boys to paraphrase him. So, you know, that's why the studying and the Zoom call conversations and what they need the offensive line to do in the scheme, hey, that's great. But you're really going to see who steps up and applies all of that once we get to next week when the padded practices begin. The padded practices, as you said, on Monday, August the 17th will begin. And then after that, each ensuing week, we will see an intra-squad scrimmage where the guys are really going to go at each other and they'll learn a lot more about what these guys' capabilities are. Lance, I think the one thing to keep in mind about the detailed stuff that he's talking about is that when you study players in the NFL because you're going to face them on a given weekend, the first thing you're going to do, if, if you're in the trenches especially, look, defensive backs will do this as well, so will linebackers, but it's the trenches that they will look for whatever little idiosyncrasy that they can find, which is going to be the key to how they can either beat you or how you have left yourself vulnerable. And there is no greater mistake than to give up a key or to be sloppy along the trenches because that's when the defensive fronts turn into sharks and they've just got blood in their eyes and they are coming for you and they will make you pay. That's the one place more than anything else you cannot afford to be sloppy with the details. Well, because issues with one offensive lineman then opens up Pandora's box for issues across the board. And that's going to be extremely important this year, especially if you have a few young guys such as Andrew Thomas starting and Will Hernandez, who was talking about this earlier in the week, developing and looking to make progress based on his finish last season. If you have a young guy next to you and the details are not necessarily falling into place, not only does that affect the young player, Paul, it could then impact everybody else on the line across the board. And that's, of course, based on what you're alluding to when things really start to fall apart. Yes, there's absolutely no question about that. And we already know that the Giants are going to have a new tackle combination because, you know, Solder has opted out, so it's going to be a new left tackle and a new right tackle. And in all likelihood, because, again, I don't know what is going on with John Jalapio. We haven't heard anything about him recently. So I'm, I'm starting to think that you can't count on him coming back to compete for the center position. So in all likelihood, the front runner right now, Spencer Pulley, has a leg up on the job. And if we assume that he's going to win it, well, he hasn't exactly played a ton next to Zeitler and Hernandez. Now, they have some familiarity, but it's not like they've got thousands of snaps between them. Well, and speaking of the center position, before we move on, he was asked about Nick Gates, Mark Colombo, and he was asked specifically about how is he coming along at center, and they said that they're doing their best to get him as many reps as humanly possible. A lot is going to be told about Nick Gates once he puts the pads on, but it seems as if the common theme that I take away, and we'll hear more on this when we hear from Jerome Henderson, cross-training is to me a common theme, Paul, across this roster, not just one facet of the team. I think with the defense at Patrick Graham, with the offensive line, with the secondary, they're trying to get guys comfortable at multiple spots so that they can be prepared for not just the injury bug, but of course the unknown of the coronavirus. Well, I think we will hear from Coach Henderson uh, one of the things that he in particular stressed more than the other guys because he was talking about, he was asked about the safeties. Yeah. And, and, and he will address this a little bit further. The bottom line is you need to have some flexibility and some versatility in what is a very, very weird off season. Yeah, Lance, we can go to Henderson next if you want, by the way. Just one other thing you said about Gates. I thought Patty Trainer from Sports Illustrated actually asked him a, a very good question, uh, Mark Colombo specifically, about Gates, that he's a bigger center, right? He's 6'5", and usually the center's a little yeah. squattier, right? And he said, look, we like big centers. You know, we had Travis Frederick in Dallas. He was a bigger player because they want that center to be able to create gaps and move people off the line of scrimmage. So he pointed out that he likes the fact that maybe they'll have a bigger, more powerful center if Nick Gates happens to win that job. Travis Frederick, by the way, 6'4", 320. Yeah. So Big not man. that far removed yes, yeah. from Nick Gates. Good he player, too. Retired, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A little bit. So question mark in terms of, of course, who's going to start at center for the Cowboys, similar to the Giants. So let's actually go to Jerome Henderson because mm -hmm. it's in theme with what we're just talking about. And he emphasized that they've been cross-training the entire secondary group, especially because of the current circumstances of the country. If you watch this system of defense, you'll, you'll see that the parts are really interchangeable in the secondary. 
You know, you'll have safety sometime moving down and playing corner. You'll have corner sometime and things moving back to play safety. So we're asking all those guys to be versatile. We're asking them to learn multiple positions. Um, and so that gives us flexibility because, you know, I always tell them that, you know, one week, like, and especially when you add COVID in the mix and what can happen there, you know, I may have been at corner all camp and the next thing you know, we have an injury, right? And then another guy's out because of COVID. Next thing you know, you're, you've switched positions midweek, right? And we play in like a couple days, um, you know, so we're trying to get guys like kind of cross trained and be ready for, for when that happens, if it happens. Um, so we are asking them to cross train and learn multiple spots. And this is nothing necessarily new for some of the players on the roster, as well as Giants history. Guys like Antrell Roll come to mind, players that were interchangeable. Terrell Thomas is another one, whether he be on the outside, the inside, safety, you name it. And then Julian Love on the current roster, bring it full circle, Paul. Here's a player also that has experience playing multiple positions. So it's a very smart philosophy. It's a wise philosophy because there's going to be circumstances this season where they may ask a corner to go to a safety spot especially if they want to get three safeties on the field. They're going to interchange guys on the outside and the inside. And I think not just the Giants, I think every team should be doing this right now to prepare for who knows what's going to happen maybe five weeks into the season. Well, that's the problem, the mystery of the unknown. And you really do not know who is going to be available on a week-to-week basis, not just because of potential injury, but because of the health concerns and the protocols. So it does behoove you to have the ability to shift guys around like chess pieces. Now, we have talked about this before. That can also be a bit overwhelming, especially for a bunch of young guys when you're talking about a team that has been rebuilt. Lance, I did a count this morning before practice. The Giants have 81 players on their roster because Sandro Plotzkummer, the Austrian running back, is part of the inter- international program that the NFL has, so he does not count. He has a roster exemption. So the Giants have actually 81 players on their roster, but they're only counting 80 right now. Of those 80, 40 of them were new faces signed after the new year. 40 of the 80. That is exactly 50%. Only 14 of those 40 are NFL veterans. So you understand what the Giants coaching staff is up against when they really have to become outstanding teachers and they're really really going to have to do a good job of trying to cross train guys because that is a gigantic sandwich to have to bite off as a young player 